And so tell us about your new book, what if, or what's as much as you're oh, comfortable yeah. saying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, the new book is about letters mm -hmm. and about um, the how do we, why is it important, why are letters still important in what I call really the post-postal age, mm -hmm. because that mm -hmm. is what we are heading towards, the post-postal age. Um, and the reason that this book came into being was because a long time ago, my husband and I lived in New York City, and we bought a broken down old house that needed complete renovation. I mean, you turn the water on and water came out of the walls because all the pipes had broken, it had no roof. Um, and in a, the backyard of this old house, we found a trunk. I mean, this was like something out of a novel, a big steamer trunk full of letters. Mm. And they were all the letters that a boy had written to his mother from the time he was born until the time she died. So from about age three, his first little, how do you like my writing, mama, mm. is one of the little cards till she died. And um, he went to college in 1908. He went to Princeton for four years and he wrote his mother two or three times a day, <laughs> a day. Our kids are both in college. <laughs> we don't get quite the same. Some of them are so short, they're almost like a text because they're just on oh, these little postcards. The mail well, those came we do twice get. a day. But as a card, you have it forever. As a text, I don't have that forever. No. Um, and when I hold these postcards that this boy wrote to his mother a hundred years ago, I am having a physical connection with that person. And what's funny is when I first read those letters, I was a young mother. I had three kids so far. Now you have four now. now I have four. Right. Um, and I really sort of fell in love with this guy mm -hmm. because he's very funny, very charming. Mm -hmm. Then I reread the letters before my oldest went to college and it was much more maternal, like, what a nice boy, he writes to his mother, what a good boy. Um, and so it really made me start thinking about letters and how much our generation and the generations before us have relied on letters mm -hmm. to document so many important things. And what are we losing if we lose letters? Well, I think we're losing, most importantly, a chance of connection, a connection that is actually somewhat immortal. Because as long as the letter exists, mm -hmm. that connection that exists. Yeah. So um, it doesn't get deleted. And I'm not a luddite. Inbox. My husband always says you're such a luddite. You hate no, no, technology. No, no, I know you're not. You're tweeting and you're on Facebook. Right. And... But I don't think we should be under the tyranny of technology. We should use right. technology. And one of our technological advances at one point in our life was to learn how to write. Yes. Yes. And it, it's a beautiful thing to see your son, and I've seen it once, <laughs> one letter I got last year, to see my son's handwriting. It really was. It was special. Do you think I, there's any hope, though, that people, that it won't just die out? Well, I think that what could happen is that people will realize that it's for very special occasions. I still, I think that still today that people, letters of condolence are generally sent as a handwritten Yes, letter. and thank you cards. And thank you cards. It's supposed to be anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's already dying out a bit. I'm getting more and more emails for that. But, mm. um, Phone calls. you know, if people can see it as something really special, I'll write you a letter on your birthday. I'll write you a letter when I fall, you know, I'll tell my son, write a letter to, you want that, that girl to fall in love with you or, or whatever to fall in love, you know, I have no, <laughs> whoever. Yeah. Um, write that person a letter. You want to get their attention? Write them a letter. Yes. You know, how special is that? Yes. I wonder, I think about poetry and how marginalized that is in our society, but a lot of people do it even though it doesn't make money, right. you may, they may right. never get published. So I wonder whether letters and, and possibly even some more ordinary books will get marginalized right. in that same way. You know? Well, you could say, you know, people still write in their diaries and their journals. Do they? I do think. I mean, you certainly see them sold. You know, all over for ages. Well, I still? still, I keep, I write down favorite lines and things like that, and that's often what I'll send in letters. Like I'll send my son Peter a really short letter saying, "Oh, I just read this great line. You, you know, yeah. I just wanted to share it with you." And I used to do that, but then I think that when I started blogging, and if you're writing a lot of nonfiction right. blogs, that sort of fills that gap. So right. you would be blogging and still doing those. I other... still do the lines. Yeah, yeah. in a little yeah. book. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So, yeah. do you get up every morning excited to work on your project? Yeah, but it's a yeah. lot of reading. I've been reading a lot of letters. Right. And not only, I mean, I've read a lot of sort of famous writers' collections, James Joyce and Chekhov and, and um, you know, then Nelson Mandela's letters, Martin Luther King, you know. But I also have been trying to, to read sort of the unknown mm -hmm. letters because mm -hmm. that's another 
um, incredible thing about letters. You can be completely unknown, but yes. your letter will survive you. Yes. Well, I think that's the same with um, some with memoir. You know, you right. can read a memoir. You can go into Barnes and Noble and find memoirs from people you do not know, right. because every human being's story is as a story. It's yes, a unique story, and it's just right. as powerful as someone who is a celebrity. Right. Exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. That's